Hi guys, this is Paige. I want to make this video about how Jesus Christ romances his bride. Now God the Father sent Jesus Christ the Son to earth to die for his bride and rescue her from death, from hell. Jesus Christ took the punishment for her sins and rescued her from hell and sacrificed himself and died for her suffering horribly for her so that he could be with her and give her eternal life. Isn't that the most romantic thing you have ever heard? I mean, what's more romantic than a man literally sacrificing his life for the woman he loves? Very romantic, right? God is a God of romance and love. He invented romance. Now, there's going to be people watching this video and the things I'm going to be talking about, they may not really sit well with them. But this is the deeper things of God and how God really, how Jesus really feels about his bride. If you don't think that, that God is romantic, go and read the Song of Solomon. Now there's people, and, and I have heard this teaching, that they literally think that, that God didn't write the Bible because of the Song of Solomon. Because they think the Song of Solomon is lustful and God wouldn't write that. In 2 Timothy, it says that you know, all scripture is inspired by God. What does that mean? That throughout all the people that wrote that Bible, the Holy Spirit worked through them and, and the Holy Spirit wrote it through them. So God wrote that Bible. God wrote the Song of Solomon. He wrote it. Now, people think, okay, when they read the Song of Solomon that it's lustful, some, and it's not lustful, actually. Now, lust, the sin of lust, is like when you see someone and, and you want them sexually, and you're, you know, thinking of them sexually and you're giving into it willfully, right? Then you commit adultery in your heart. But when a man and a woman get married and they desire each other sexually, that's not a sin. That's not lust. That's not the sin of lust. That's not adultery. Because that person belongs to you. It no longer becomes sin when you're married. You see? You see the difference there? The, the Song of Solomon is about a man and a woman who are married, who are passionately, deeply, romantically in love with each other. That's what that's about. That's not lust. That's not the sin of lust or adultery or whatever. That's what it's about. And, and you'll read some of it and it's like, you know, you are so fair to me and there's no spot in you. And... Now, the relationship between a man and a woman is a representation of, of the relationship be between Jesus Christ and his bride. Right? It's a representation of it. Jesus has literally referred to himself like he has related himself as a husband to, to his bride. Husbands love your wives like Christ loves the church, right? So the Song of Solomon is actually how Jesus Christ feels for his bride also. It's how he feels for his bride. Now, there's a difference here because when a man and a woman get married, they, it becomes sexual, okay? 
Now with Jesus Christ and his bride, it's not sexual. Okay, it's holy. But it's also very romantic and passionate also. There's verses in Song of Solomon that talk about a woman's breasts and how they're like created perfectly and all that. Now, in relation to a man and a woman, that's talking about how the man wants her so much and desires her. But when it's talking about Jesus and his bride, he's talking about how, how he has formed her so beautifully. How she's so beautifully formed in his eyes. I mean, there are verses in Proverbs and it says to delight in your wife and be satisfied in her breasts and, you know, rejoice or be ravished by her love always. That's what it says. God wrote that. He wrote that. That was him. When you're a born again Christian, you're literally living in the greatest love story ever. And when you become Jesus's bride, he's going to romance you and win your heart. You know how I talked about how his heart flutters when, when you look at him or speak to him or speak his word. He wants your heart to flutter for him too. He does. Now in my walk with God, God will literally show me certain things that are romantic and he'll be like, Paige, this is you. You're the woman and I'm the man there. And it'll be like the man loving the woman so much, pursuing her, looking at her like that she's the best thing ever. He'll show me things like that. It's romantic. It's romantic. Now, it's kind of different if you're a woman. If you're a woman of God, it's kind of different because Jesus Christ is a man and it's kind of like you have this romance with him. Throughout your journey with God, it's like you're in this love, romantic love relationship with him. That's what it's like. And women at the core of themselves, God created them to be romantic, to want romantic love and to like it. So women kind of feel like that, you know, whereas men, I believe for men, it's more of a reverence thing. Don't get me wrong. Women of God <laughs> reverence him. But with men, it's more of a reverence thing where they reverence God, like Jesus, and they're like very grateful for, for everything he's done and that sort of thing. But this is also for men. It says in the book of John that, that there was a disciple who, who was laying on Jesus Christ's bosom and who Jesus loved greatly and who was that disciple that was John he was literally laying on his bosom and Jesus loved him greatly if you think about that a man laying on another man's bosom is kind of like oh but with Jesus it's different It says in the Bible to greet one another with a holy kiss. This is for men. That's not even talking about women, I don't think. Maybe some women. But they're like, greet each other with a holy kiss. You know, there's a song I'll sing to God, and the song's called Kiss Me. And I'll... It's like about me wanting a kiss from him and he loves that song. I'll feel his fire. Literally, like he wants to kiss me on the mouth. 
You see, when I talk about this stuff, people might feel like that's just, but this is really how it is. And I'm talking about a holy kiss. If, if God wants us to kiss each other with a holy kiss, how much more would Jesus Christ want to give you a holy kiss? That's how it is. Jesus Christ, when you come to him, he becomes everything to you. He's your father. He's your brother. He, he's your friend. He's the love of your life. And he's your maker. Literally the, your maker, the one who has created you. Jesus Christ literally created you to, to, so he could ravish his love upon you and glorify himself through you and save you, rescue you, romance you. There are times where he would be showing me that, like between a man and a woman, and he'd be like, Paige, that's you, and I'm the man. And the way the man would look at her and like she was the best thing ever, I mean, it made my heart flutter. Like I'd be like, my heart would be fluttering for God. This is the deeper things of God. It's an all-consuming love romantic story on this journey you know it's a romantic story here you're in now god had recently had me watch this movie you know god will lead me to look at certain things and there's this movie he wanted me to watch and in this movie this one the girl in the movie is a princess and he's like that's you and, and the, the man who's loving her and pursuing her represents Jesus. Now, throughout the movie, the man is a prince. And he, he comes to her and he offers her all these beautiful things for her. And, and she at one point was like, are you trying to buy me? And he was like, yes. And then he regretted what he said because she got upset. But, and I was like, that's like me and Jesus. That's like me and him. There was one point where she, he was helping her and, and trying to get her to escape from people running after them. And she had to jump over this very t high, you know, building sort of thing and he was on the other side and he was like you can do it you can do it and I was like this is me and Jesus that's how he is when you know with jumping and faith and stuff like that but anyway these two they go on a a, a beautiful journey together and before the journey he says to her he's like do you trust me and she says yes and they go on this beautiful journey and he's singing to her and she's singing to him and they're looking at each other I mean when God would show me these things and he'd be like you're that princess and that's how I look at you I'm singing over you I'm singing to you And you know what happened, like in the end of the movie, the princess's father told her, he was like, you, you have shown, I'm sorry, I want to go back. And then there's a bad guy in the movie. And the bad guy in the movie represented Satan. And you know what he was telling her to do? He was like, be silent, don't speak. She literally sang a song in the movie about how she's going to not be silent. She's going to speak. And God was like, that's you. And that's the devil trying to be, make you be quiet. And so she would speak. And in the end, 
basically her father said, you've shown great courage and strength. And then he, he made her like a leader because of that. And I was like, God, this is you speaking to me. I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was so edified. God will speak through anything. He speaks through these things. Now, in my past, I had really idolized romance. You know, and God doesn't want me to idolize it, but romance in general is a representation of his love. Jesus' love for his bride. Now, there's things God will not want us to watch that are full of sin and stuff like that, but that's what he showed me. And when he shows me these things and how this, these men are pursuing these women like they're the best thing ever, and that's how he feels for me, my heart flutters. It flutters for him. That's how it is. I just wanted to share that with you guys because this is like how Jesus Christ loves his bride. This is something a lot of people don't understand. All right, I love you guys. Bye.